Presenting. Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Hey, everybody. Mama for many, but especially my love, Eric Runemedhus, nice Norwegian name there. And we have, we're so uh, honored to have Courtney Dillon here on the show. And hi, hi everyone. Hi, Eric. Hi, Eric says, hi, Mom. Um, he's He's got some stuff to say today, it looks like, so he's ready to talk. Um, and thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here to talk to everyone. I'm excited, but first I want you to tell us all the things you have to offer, because you know what? You do a lot more than channeling spirit. Yeah, yeah, I do a lot of things. Um, Well, let's see. I do intuitive readings. I do a lot of mediumship, um, connecting with loved ones who've crossed over. Um, I do, uh, if people have medical issues, I have a medical spirit team. We look into that. Um, and really like emotional healing, a lot of emotional healing and uh, that kind of thing. So if you have trauma, we work on those things. So, and it's all connected also. So well, it's hard of course. to, you know, yeah, exactly. That's so, so, so cool. So you're like a master of all trades, man. That's awesome. Hey, Eric, well, what, do you think about, what do you think about Courtney? <laughs> He's so oh, he, he 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 says he likes me. He's happy Aww. with the work I'm doing. So I'm Aww. I. He's become a good friend over the last year. So I really love Eric. And Aww. I'm grateful Aww. that he comes in my sessions and helps me out. So uh, maybe maybe uh, pestering too much. Oh, uh, uh, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? He, yeah, he does pester, but he's also helpful. So that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Now, before we hear Eric, uh, he's got a lot to say. I understand. Mm-hmm. I, I want to hear from my beautiful best friend from college days and throughout most of my life, Brian McKeska, gay guy, AIDS, big smoker. And he was just found face planted in front of his house. And I was called and went to the ER and they were like, Pumping on, I was like, oh no, don't, no. Yeah, he, well, as you were, because we were talking for a second before we got on air. Yeah, and, that's how I wanted to bring it up, yeah. Um, I did feel him stepping forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, it does feel like a, a heart attack, actually. Okay. Um, yeah. I'll he says it. the smoking didn't help. <laughs> He's laughing. Right. I miss you, Brian. I miss you so much. You know, he likes the work you're doing. He feels really happy about it. Oh, Brian was valedictorian in Bel Air High School, a very difficult high school. He was genius, and he was, yeah, you know, he, a at Rice University with me. Well, he's saying that you guys were, well, you're just really good friends, soul friends, and you, yeah. and it's interesting, you've been friends in another lifetime, but the, the he shows me you're both, he's very smart, but he says he didn't, I mean, and you know this, he struggled sometimes with his life choices, but this was early on. And of course, you know, um, yeah, of course. Oh yeah. Uh, he has but he says time. that you're, he's happy with the way you've turned out. So, Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway, I miss you very much. He misses you too, but he's in a good, he's doing well. Good. Really I'm sorry well. I tried to fix you up with with my roommate Mindy. You had such a deep voice and you were not Nelly at all. So I thought I thought you were gay. But when I found out you were gay, it was awesome. We always would go to the House of Pies. We call it the House of Guys and check out the <laughs> pies. It was awesome. Anyway, wow. He said you're a good. He's making a joke. He says you're a good wingman. Yeah, I try, man. I try. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I guess we will hear what Eric has to say before we take callers. So Eric is was showing me uh, today that I think the people are going to listen to this later on and the people listening today, there's a need for people um, to get kind of grounded. There's a lot of, um, it must be something to do with the astrology. He said he won't go into all that part. Oh, I get it. I get it. He's showing me that um, eclipses. So I think we're heading into like an eclipse period oh. of time or eclipse season where we're oh, um, yeah. he's 
bookend. So I think we're going to be bookended with eclipses. So uh, sorry, astrology people, if I'm wrong or I'm butchering this a little bit. But well, the point is, the, lar- the, more, the larger point he wants to say is it's, it's a period of time that brings up our shadows. It brings up our pain, and it's very accelerated. Ooh. So during this period, he wants everybody to get grounded. What does that mean? Let's talk about that, what that means, because he wants me to be specific, not just say get okay. grounded, because that can be confusing. He wants people to literally do things to get in your physical body. Uh, so whether that's uh, walking, dancing, putting your feet on the ground. He says it's summer in most places, so that would be okay. Mm-hmm. Um, breathing, like like doing some uh, breathing practices or breath work. Anything that that brings you back to your physical body because it's going to be really important over the next um, period of one month. Okay. One month. If you don't, what happens? We're just going to feel uh, extra, uh, sorry to say, but there's a little bit of like fragile emotional pain coming up and we might feel extra fragile. So as these emotions surface, it's important to be grounded in physical reality and not try to escape what's coming up because he shows me it's kind of like a, I don't know if you've had this sense too, Elisa, but it's like a big clearing happening. Um, right now, so yes. so it's a good thing, right? This astrological it, event. Yeah, it's good, but it's not necessarily going to feel. Uh, great. You know what I mean? So it will be good. He says on the other side. So I'm not saying that as right, a warning. So no, but no pain, no gain. In other words, right? Yeah, whatever's coming up, meaning like the energy, whatever these eclipses do, they bring up what we need to look at. Oh. what we need to look at uh, in our lives. So it can come up through other people, meaning somebody will be, make us aware of a pattern within ourselves. It can come up as an emotion. But pay attention to what's happening right now because it gives you, he shows me like a, a detective, you know, a what's a um, magnifying glass. Thank you. And it, it gives us a clue to what we are, trying to uh, clear within ourselves. So this is a good moment to just pay attention to what's happening in our life. He's saying for the people who feel stuck, because there's going to be some people that we even talked to today that feel stuck. Yeah. um, You very well, the, the energy gets moving and you're going to move beyond past limitations uh, in the next month. So I think it's positive, but it may be a little bit of a, like a, you know. Shake things up a little bit. Shake your yes. emotions. Yeah, your energy. Shaking Anytime it up. Change in, the, in your energy, it can be, you know, pleasant. It can be uncomfortable. It can be all mm-hmm. of the above, I can imagine, right? Exactly. So okay. that's, that's his, his uh, wisdom for, well, he says he has a lot more. He's ready to talk, but um he, he was laughing when he says he's got a lot more wisdom, like he does, but he's also, you know, always kind of joking around about himself. I know. Um, but he does have a lot of wisdom. And yeah, he does. And yeah, he's not he really, really all ego and I'm all that and a bag of chips. You no, know. he's not that way at all. He's really um, taken on his mission with sincerity and um, is – it really invested in helping people on the planet. And so he's even saying to me right now, if you want to call on him to help you, he will, he will answer that call. So um, to help Eric, you learn you know, about yourself. Yeah. Eric, my guardian angel is the guardian angel Veronica, and I'm part of the um, project victory earth, helping humanity. And I think that with the scale work, maybe, you know, we're doing that together. Who was your guardian angel? Uh, James. James, okay. Were you part yeah, of any project while you were here? Yes, but he didn't know it. Of course he not. He really, no, he didn't have any, he says the difference, I mean, you know, you saw him. 
Um, you knew him as actually quite a insightful and spiritual person in some ways. Yes. On the yeah. planet, he's saying. Yeah. But he had this other side that, uh, you know, he was also, he says, just really young. He didn't yeah. really have come into full awareness of his, like, mission, but he's come into awareness of his mission on the other side. So he said it is, there's no waste. <laughs> yeah. But with you, he says, you've come into your mission really fully. Like, you understand what you're here to do. Right. So I really do, finally. He, you really, really do. And it, it, he's, it, you know, it took you a little while, but you, and he's saying to me, you, you both know what you're here to do now. And, right. right. And so that's the goal, really. The goal, he's saying, is for us to know who we are as source, as consciousness, as God, and then to serve from that place, to know our spiritual mission on the planet. Um, and so he's really, um, he says, James, he didn't have a clear awareness of his angelic team on when he was on the planet, but he does now, he says. Better late oh, than never, yeah. he says. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, speaking of the Atlanta Scaler work, I just added um, uh, the in the script for the, for you know, the cure for hypertension and also for the age reversal. Um, increasing nitric oxide to the maximum level. That's what Super Beast does, people. So, uh, anyway, that should be interesting. I can't wait to find out how that works. I'm always adding stuff, always. And these scripts are getting longer and longer. But anyway, that's okay. It's all for good. Anything else you want to say before we take callers? Um, that is, I, there's a big shift happening this year. So, uh, and I think he's spoken about, I, I not through me, but through one of the other uh, mediums, but he's spoken about the big change happening this year, but he sees that it's on track. So good. that's good. Yeah. Well, something's got to shift. We cannot have this like it is now, but you know, a lot of times we have to go through a lot of chaos so that the dust settles and then clarity and awareness is on the other side. Chaos is for a higher purpose and higher order. You're right. That's what he says. So I agree. Shake mm-hmm. up the old establishment. You know? All right. Yeah. So, okay. Can we take callers then? Oh, go yeah. Sorry. No, no, no. That, that sounds great. Let's take callers. Okay. Got somebody from the uh, 786 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hi, Elisa. Hi, Courtney. Hello. Hi, Eric. Hi. This is Kenya. I'm calling from Miami. Hi. Hi there. How are you? Good. How are you? you? How are you? And what what do you got for us? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask uh, Eric to see uh, how my husband and me can encourage my son to find a part-time job. Okay. Hold on. What's your son's name? Lucas. Lucas. Okay. Oh. How old? <laughs> How old is Lucas? Uh, 19. Okay, one second. Let me just start to look. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eric, uh, Eric is showing me... Yeah, he's a little resistant. But the thing is that this part you may not know, he's showing me that he's got some fear. He feels like... Me. Go ahead. I'm Who, sorry. Him? Uh, Lucas yeah, your son. Or me? Your son. Ah, okay. Um, there's okay. so he's not going to show this part to you. This he's keeping this like a little bit hidden, but he has. He feels like um, like he doesn't even know what direction to look in or where to start. He feels kind of overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. And so what Eric's saying is, encourage him to break it. So this is just very practical, but encourage him to break the tasks down or because he doesn't, he feels very overwhelmed about where to start into more Mm -hmm. manageable, he says, manageable pieces. So like, I know this, I know he's an adult, but I'm wondering if there's a way in which you can help him uh, conceptualize or think about 
how does one go about looking for and finding a job? By giving him the mm. exact, he, he feels really confused, tools and techniques. Like, uh, you know, maybe he goes on Indeed one day, or maybe he goes wherever to well, pick well, up an first application. Of all, mm-hmm. First of all, does he have any interest that he's expressed at all in any any type of path? <laughs> Well, he was trying. Uh, he's in the university too. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. He had a job at a firm, at a law office, or a friend of my husband, and mm-hmm. he quit because uh, he said that the people there treated him badly, and he wasn't feeling, you know, happy there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And also, he tends to be on the lazy side. I don't want to put labels on my son, but he. You know, let me tell you, your Lucas sounds a lot like my Lucas was, okay? I thought Lucas was so lazy, but it, and he was really scared of growing up. He was like, wait a minute, when I'm a grown-up, I don't get summers off? <laughs> like, was so, mm. He sat on the couch with me and, and, and almost cried, saying, I'm so scared of growing up. The adult world is so mm-hmm. scary. And he was about your Lucas's age when he said that. But once he found his niche, oh, my God. It's amazing. What about vocational aptitude testing? You know, a lot of colleges, like I know my old alma mater, Rice University, does, you know, vocational aptitude testing. It doesn't always work because my group roommate said she should be a nun, so it doesn't always work. But <laughs> uh, uh, he, he was interested in psychology, too. Mm-hmm. But I feel that he's very sensitive and uh, in, in middle school. He got some issue, and um, he's very sensitive, and he changed a lot. For seven years, I thought the extraterrestrial took him, and I didn't hear from him after seven years because he changed so much, you know? And mm, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> he'll find his I, way. I'm talking he's to his entire self every day. <laughs> yeah, he, he'll find his way. Eric, maybe you can nudge him and help him, give him some guidance. Yeah, oh, Eric. Yeah, exactly. And Eric just wants to remind, this is hard because you feel frustrated in some ways, and that makes sense, but he's really afraid. He feels just like I, he doesn't know what direction to turn, and I think he mm-hmm. feels bruised from his last situation. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes even though he's an adult, giving him like, hey, maybe have you thought about this or this, you know, giving him some suggestions uh, of, of how to sure, start looking. Make sure you don't push her in, in, in the direction that's good, that you think it's best for him. Uh, for, I mean, you know, like, you know how, oh, I want my kid to be a lawyer or a doctor or whatever. So be careful about that and let him find his own way. And I think getting the college counselor to give him some guidance too might help. Yeah. All right, we better move on to the next caller. Okay. But yeah, we'll be fine. Thank you. He's only, 19. He's only 19. He's still a sweet baby. He'll figure and, it out. Yeah, of course. My Lucas did, and he's amazing now. I, uh, there were times I wondered, though. All right, got somebody from the step of the area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hello. Anybody want? There we go. Hi. Happy to be with you. Thank you. Oh, of course. Thank you. Thank Who you. Are we with and what town are you from? This is Melissa from Manchester, New Jersey. Oh, Melissa from Manchester. All right. Awesome. How can we help you, Melissa? I, I was a caregiver for my in-laws. Their name is Ruth and, and Norman. Mm-hmm. Will, and uh, and they've passed. I mm-hmm. it was almost two years. I was taking care of Norman. And now I'm kind of going through withdrawals, and I don't know if they've gone through their life review or if they're around, but I was just wondering, since so much has happened, if they have any messages for me. Uh, I feel Norman very strongly. Um, Ruth, a little bit, uh, she doesn't feel like I hear her as much, but I feel Norman stepping forward. You know, he is, um, one, he wants to thank you for how much sacrifice. Uh, It looks like you gave so, like, 
oh my gosh, we just put everything into taking care of them. Oh. And they love you so much as their oh, like you're you are uh their daughter and they love you so much and they're so grateful for uh, you cared for them just so lovingly you and you didn't complain and you didn't ask for recognition you just went and did it and he wants to know how you didn't know that he knows how hard it was because they were both in just such bad shape and he wants to say that you made all the difference in in his life and how they crossed, meaning that you really, really helped them. And that will, he will never forget that. And he wants you to know that. He loves you very much. I love I love him too. I, I miss him. And even though I knew it was a little difficult and that I kept imagining the things I could have been doing, I, I, I kind of feel like I have that guilt, but I would have been for another 10 years, and I and now I feel like I just miss him. Well, he wants you to not uh, to actually, he doesn't want you to feel guilty at all, because his message overwhelmingly is how much you helped them. You Like, you put everything you had, and yes, you have maybe some thoughts of other things you wanted to do at the time because it was difficult. And that's just normal. But he wants you to let go of any guilt because all he feels is just overwhelming gratitude. Thank you so much. Thank you for that message. You're welcome. He loves you very much, he says. They both do. I love him too. Thank you. You're welcome. Hmm. Hi everyone. Um, we're going to uh, we're having some technical difficulties, and we're going to just end the show um, right now. I'm so sorry. Uh, we'll be back soon. <laughs>